On this NSP short, Peter McKay tells the story of how he got into politics. It involved a nudge from Jean Charest, a massive battle for the nomination, and getting fired from the Crown Prosecutor's Office. I was launched as far as what I thought I was supposed to do in terms of a career in law. I'd taken this bit of a, a diversion into the Crown Attorney's Office. And politics, quite frankly, while it was around me, was not something that I was really pursuing in any way. I was aware of it and knew the importance of politics, knew many of the players, I suppose, because of my father's career, which I followed, you know, closely, as you would with a parent. But I was not involved in youth politics or campus politics. I, I, uh, I say this with some hesitation. I didn't belong to a political party until I ran for a political party. And, you know, the, the political influence, as I alluded to earlier, came from probably more so my mother than my father, just because of the way, you know, I grew up kind of in a single parent home. Um, and it was a chance encounter that I had with, with Jean Charest at a convention, a provincial meeting that was happening in Halifax. And I sort of went with some of my friends, almost as a lark in a way, because we were not politically active, but we, we were interested. And Charest had served with my dad, um, but he was a young guy, very dynamic, bilingual, leading the party, you know, trying to bring about a resurgence of the Conservative Party after the, the meltdown in, in 1993. And the divisions that had happened, as I came to understand later, and uh, he just struck me as a as somebody who I I admired, and that I you know I was very curious as to what he was going to do, and um, I, I met him in Halifax, and he uh, he was very interested in what I was doing. He seemed, and he he'd started off in law as well, and wasn't you know when I look back on, it, he wasn't that much older than I was, although he'd had a, a pretty substantial career already in politics. And so he reached out to me and said, you know, you should do this and we're, uh, you know, we're looking for good candidates and, you know, and you would be a terrific candidate, something you should consider. And I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm happy what I'm doing and I, I really I appreciate it and it's very kind of you. And, and then, you know, it, it's funny how certain things happen. I had already, and I, and I referenced this, um, struggled with the way that victims were treated by the system itself. I thought the Young Offenders Act was also quite flawed in terms of the legislation itself. And I was doing a lot of young offender court work at that time. Previously, it was called the Juvenile Delinquents Act, Young Offenders Act, Youth Criminal Justice Act. It had gone through several iterations. And so I started entertaining, you know, the thought of maybe getting involved. But this was, you know, this was 2000, late 2006, um, as it turned out, there was an election in 2007. There were already declared candidates for nomination. And we're talking here about the Progressive Conservative Party, um, which, you know, my father had been the MP here for 23 years. But there was a gap. You know, the, the seat had been won by uh, a liberal MP and a liberal candidate. And then you know, there, there was obviously a sense of urgency to get a candidate, but there were four other people in the race, and I was working at the Crown Attorney's Office, which, as I, I, I soon discovered, uh, designated me under provincial legislation as a politically restricted person. Um, but, you know, I, I went through all the proper channels. I went to the regional, local uh, sort of office manager first. Then I went to the regional office, and they all said, yeah, it's fine. It's, uh, they probably thought, this guy's got no chance of winning anyway, so yeah, let him. <laughs> it's always fine till it's not. <laughs> yeah, let him, let him go off and do this flight of fancy. And uh, so I did. I, I you know, sort of took uh, not a leave of absence, but I did light duties and you know, appeal work and research, and I wasn't going to court. But I just, I signed everybody up. I signed up friends and colleagues and family and uh, people I'd worked with. They, they bought membership cards in the party and 
lo and behold, we had this massive nomination battle that went on, you know, the better part of a day, the day of the actual convention. And I won. Um, and it was sort of like a dog chasing a car. Well, what do I do now? Well, I didn't even have time to think about it because the, the uh, head of the public prosecution service called me into his office and fired me, basically made it a very public, you know, uh, almost like an assassination, you know, hanging in the public square. They, he, there was a reporter there when I showed up at his office. So it was a very That public... can't have been the first moment that he realized that you were, you were running for the nomination. No. Yeah. No, no, no. There was yeah. malice aforethought. And, uh, you know, the, the, the whole idea that you would prevent somebody who is in public service already from seeking public office to me seemed very, you know, counterintuitive and, and, uh, and unjust. And anyway, fast forward. Um, I mean, I had done a little bit of research myself and had already reached out to a classmate of mine who was now a lawyer and said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sue the province. You know, this is, uh, they can't take my job. I mean, there was, I had no guarantee that I was going to win. In yeah, fact, it was unlikely that I was going to win. At that point, the Conservative Party had two seats in the Parliament of Canada. Right. Yeah. And had gotten wiped off the map, right. basically. And you've just been it's, fired. And I'd just been fired. And I'd never been fired from anything, from, you know, tree planting to working at a gas station as a kid. I'd, I'd never had anybody say, you're fired, especially in such a public way. And so, uh, you know, I, I went to work <laughs> in the woods working with a guy driving a, a skitter and, uh, you know, sort of trying to unpack what had happened and getting ready for an election that we knew was coming. But, you know, when I look back on it, it was it was probably the most um, public launching pad that I could have had for public life. They were debating on the radio whether I should be fired, whether there should be restrictions on public employees. And, you know, the case took some time. And, and you know, I, I was lucky to have been elected and then it took on, you know, it sort of put on the back burner in terms of what I was doing. I was trying to learn the ropes in Parliament and set up offices. But the case eventually was on the courthouse steps, and then the province folded. 